Let's talk about donuts. I posted this on my Instagram. I remember like in late, late, late December. I talked about how much I liked this record. And um, I re-listened to it. I re-listened. I, I'm recording this on a Sunday. And uh, technically, it's, it's Monday at 12. <laughs> uh, yeah, 12. Um, yeah, I uh, I re-listened to it like Saturday, yesterday. And um, this is a very good album. This is a very good fucking album. I'm like, I have to talk about this. You know, and it's convenient because Kanye, the bastard, he didn't drop. So I was like, fuck, uh, what am I going to talk about? But then yesterday I was like, let me let me listen to some donuts again. And uh, I definitely did not regret that at all. This is a great album, you know. And the interesting thing about this album is that when I, I, I first learned about Jay Dilla on Twitter. I remember when I used to use Twitter. I used to follow a lot of us, uh, a lot of hip hop accounts, and they, you know, this was one of like the high, like the top tier records. Like it was, you know, it was in the top tier and the upper echelon of records. And I was like, you know, what's all this about? And I've, I've, I think I've heard of Jay Della, but I might never really dabbled on his music. You know, he's not mainstream, so I didn't really know about him. You know, and he's like passed my time, and he also passed away in two thousand and six tragically. So, um, I, I believe that it was like in December, late December that I got around to why to, to listen to this record and I was not, I was not disappointed. That's for sure. It's different. You know, it's kind of like how I thought that Frank Ocean was a rapper for the longest time. And when I heard Blonde, I was like, yeah, like, you know, he's not rapping at all. He's singing. That's kind of like the feeling that I got with Jay Dilla. But in a different sense, I thought he was a rapper, but he's just a producer. And, the, you know, the songs, sure, you can hear a human's voice, but it's it's samples. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not a rapper per se sing, uh, rapping to us. So that's one of the reasons why I feel like this album would be, can be, you know, a little bit of a a, a change. You know, it might not hit as well. As it did for me, for you, you feel me? Like, I wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't resonate with it. You might not, you know, might not listen, you know, you might not like that, you know, you might like other stuff, you know, and that's completely fine. And um, this, when I listened to this on Saturday, it really reminded me of why I love hip hop so much, you know, like one of the reasons why it's my favorite or, yeah, it's one of my favorite genres in, in music. You know, because this incorporates perfectly the, the stuff that I like most about hip hop production, which is, you know, uh, the kind of like lo-fi beats, the bass that you can hear and the samples, the samples, the samples in this, this might be the great, the greatest collection of samples that I've heard in a record. And um, don't quote me on that because Kanye also has a lot of good samples, but um, it's just, it, it's, you know, first of all, they're very, you know, uh, they're very hard to find, or I guess they're just, uh, uh, you know, very uh, undercover, I guess, or very low-key, or I don't know how to say it. You know, they're just uh, very uh, hard. No, how to fucking say it? Oh, my. They're very shit. I don't fucking remember. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're just strange, you know, out of left field samples, I guess. They're just rare rare samples that's the word they're rare samples and um you know let's talk about a little bit about the the feeling that i get from listening to this because that's one of the most important things when you're listening to a record you know as much as i can talk talk here and you know bring up mf doom later and talk about oh my god when he rhymed this word with this word or whatever and all the intricacies you know most people are well most um, a lot of hip-hop heads are gonna enjoy that but i don't personally like that as much you know sure in some records you you know you kind of need it you know like in kink and to pimp a butterfly by kendrick lamar or even damn by kendrick lamar you need to you know you know uh, go a little bit more in depth into the lyrics but you know uh in these cases i don't feel like you have to um so yeah, let's talk about it. It's all about the feeling that you get from listening to these songs, you know? And uh, the feeling that I got, I got two main feelings listening to this. First of all, the first one is, is nostalgia, you know? Because even though I was, uh, I was like two years, I was like one year, I was like almost, I was one year old, one year old. 
when when this album dropped because it was like like february 2006 so yeah i was i was like one years old one year old <laughs> and uh obviously i don't remember that time but the samples that he uses are from the 60s or from the the late 50s and you kind of get like that movie type of vibe the same thing that you get from like watching like pulp fiction like in the in the in the rogers grill and the in the restaurant that me and vince went to like you get kind of like that you know 80s or 90s vibes you know and I feel like you can sense that from this record, you feel me? But from the 60s or from the 50s, you feel me? It's all like so, um, it's, you just you just imagine like the, the little small microphone, you see the girls with like massive wigs or like Mar Marilyn Monroe-esque, you know, all the men dressed in suits, like you just feel that that type of vibe, you know, and the, the, the beats, you know, the, the drums when they come in, the bass, they're just, you know, it just brings just just joy, you know, like a uncontrollable joy, you know, like good times, you know. And um, that's something that he does perfectly. He kind of sets the mood for a lot of these songs. And on the opposite end of that, the, the other feeling that you can get is sadness, you know. And that kind of correlates with nostalgia as well. When you're feeling nostalgic, you might just stop, you know, you might feel depressed or whatever. And mainly because, and this is one of the most impressive things about this record, is that he was he was not on his deathbed, but he had a, a very uh, a serious illness, you know, at the time. And I don't remember which one it was. It might be cancer or something. But he knew that he, his time was, was coming to an end. His time was limited. And he recorded all this in like a very small, you can Google it, um, you know the 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 keyboard that Jay Dilla used while recording donuts. I'm, I feel like that's in like a museum or something. I feel like in Detroit or wherever in New York or whatever. But um, he recorded this in a very you know very you know it has a lot of buttons, but it's you know for a fucking album. It's insane how he was able to record this, you know, find the samples and all of that in this one piece of equipment. But he did it. You know, that's one of the great great things about him. But um, and some of these songs, especially like "Don't Don't Cry," or even yeah, and and "Don't Cry" mainly, you can just feel like the 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 depression, and in the 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 later the latter um, uh, in like the second half of this project, you can kind of feel the the dread or the anxiety that he feels from you know knowing that he's gonna die. You know, and the fact that he can ex he can he can express that without saying a word, you know, just using samples and the beats is is incredible. You know, the instruments are just beautiful in this record. And um, this one makes it such a good album. You know, the title Donuts. I feel like Donuts for me, you know, symbolize like the good times. You feel me? Like the the feeling that you get from being, you know, from good memories. You know, and how they can seem like infinite cycles. That's how I wrote. That's how I wrote it there. You know, it's just like, you know, donuts are sweet, and they're you know they're a circle, so they're kind of infinite. And um, he he kind of does that with the samples as well. He just you know, he was he wasn't around in the fifties or the sixties, you know, but um, the way that he uses the samples to kind of like you know set the scene. For like, oh yeah, in a restaurant or wherever, it's like, oh, good times, you know, or where, you know, whoever else, and, you know, it's kind of tragic, you know, in the way that, it's yeah, it's kind of tragic how, you know, most of those people now they're probably, either dead or very old, you know, the people from the fifties or the sixties, but back then they were like in their prime, they were happy, they were having sex, they were doing all of the stuff, they were drinking, they were just having fun, and um. This is kind of a celebration of those feelings, you know, which is kind of the beautiful thing about this album. It's a beautiful thing. But, um, yeah, let's talk about the fucking, let's talk about the the take-homes, you know, and why the fuck is this so far from me? Jesus Christ. Okay, here we go. Um, I don't know why that shit's so far. I feel like it should be way, okay, I'm going to move it for next episode. Um, yeah, let's talk, yeah, the, the title, the tracks, there, um, there's 31 songs on this record. It seems like a lot, you know, like even ha a record half of its size, like 15, like Call Me or Forget Losses is, is like 15 songs, and that's a, 
relatively long album. You know, this is like a, you know, a quarter of this is Kitsy Ghost or Daytona by Pusha T. It's crazy. But um, the thing about this record is that the songs are very short. Like the runtime is only 43 minutes. So there's a shit t- ton of songs, but, you know, the, the longest song is like two and a half minutes maybe. Like most of the songs are like a minute 40 or even 50 seconds, you know. But they're just, uh, they come in quick and they just deliver. You feel me? It doesn't have like the structure of an actual song. You feel me? It doesn't have a chorus. It just has like a vibe to it. You know, it has like a, you know, a groove to it. But let's take, let's let's look at the take homes, you know. Uh, t- t- Okay, so the take homes, if you guys don't know, these songs are not necessarily the most lyrical songs. But they're the most enjoyable songs. You feel me? The ones that you can play at a party. I don't. I doubt that you can play these at a party unless it's like at my house. <laughs> um, but um, these are the ones that don't really. They just. They just feel good. And in the, in the case of this record, they just. These are my favorite songs. I guess you know, in terms of the 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 vibe that it that it gives out. So the first one is "Light My Fire." That's short. That's like 50 seconds, but I just love the sample, and I love the bass when it comes in. It just, it, it's just great, man. It's just fucking incredible. I just, I don't know. I don't, I just don't know why, but I just enjoy it so much, you know? <laughs> the second one is Time, the Donut of the Heart. That is, you know, that it samples a Michael Jackson song, a Jackson 5 song, All I Do Is Think Of You. I believe that that's the name of the song. Um, it's great, you know. Uh, it's, it's it's particularly great when you listen to "All I Do Is Think of You" by the Jackson Fives, and then listen to "Time Donut of the Heart of the Heart" afterwards, like directly, like in cue, and um, it just it's just cool, you know, like th- that 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 line, or that you know that leading noise <laughs> is 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 incredible, and this and the third one. Is you love that was like you know, I was like, holy shit, like I was at the shower listening to this, and I was like, holy shit, this song is really good. So, uh, yeah, the take homes are Light My Fire, Time Donut of the Heart, and You Love. Okay, the takeaways these are the songs that I don't like, there's not a single one. Okay, I love every single song from this record, and that's something that you're gonna see from the Mad Villainy one as well. I just love every single song from this record, and the lyrical Liverpool. Um, and then in this case, there's no, you know, of course he doesn't rap in this album, but I do have to appreciate Don't Cry, the song Don't Cry, because it talks about, you know, the meaning behind the song is, you know, Jay Dill is depressed, you know, he's anxious, he's on his deathbed, he's in a hospital, you know, and he doesn't want to die, but he's going to have to die, he's sad, and this kind of incorporates, this kind of like, you know, you know, this is kind of like the tone of this album. You know, as much as, you know, I talk about how much I like Light My Fire and Time Donor of the Heart, these songs are how also have like an existential meaning behind them. You know, this whole album, you know, could be could be interpreted as that. So, yeah. So, Take Homes, Light My Fire, Time Donor of the Heart, You Love. Takeaway is not a single one. There's, no, there's, there's not a, a takeaway. And Lyrical Liverpool, Don't Cry. So, yeah. Jay Dilla, 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 Jay Dilla, man. I'm going to put this on. The podcast is available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Breakers, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, Anchor, and starting next week, it will be available on SoundCloud. Only new episodes, okay? You can also catch the clips in my YouTube channel, link in bio. Okay, bye.